Hello and welcome back to the All New Nerds. I am joined today by a very, very special guest, Mr. Brendan Wayne, the Mandalorian himself. You might know him from Cowboys and Aliens or Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. or maybe even Fast and Furious. He was an FBI agent in that. But, <laughs> you know, you're probably here. This is, a, this is a Star Wars channel, so you probably know him as the Mandalorian. Uh, how are you doing today, man? Welcome to the channel. Uh, unreal. Thank you so much for having me on. I, I love that you just, you know, I, I've presented myself in a way that makes you feel comfortable, you know, to say, hey, can we do an interview? Yeah, I, I, <laughs> the fact that, yeah, I couldn't be more appreciative of that fact. But, um, yeah, here we are. So uh, I think, uh, you know, why not get, just get off to the races? So yeah. in, season, in season one, you are credited as a double. Now by season three, you get the full, you and Latif are over the, the Doug, beautiful Doug Chang art. Um, and when this was pitched to you, you were told that it was sort of like a, a David Prowse situation. But something unique to, I think, you is that you're not a stuntman or a double by trade. <laughs> you're, an, you're an actor, you know, you're, you're, a class, you're, you, you're a trained actor. And yeah. in, this, in this role, you are not only learning all the lines, but performing them. You know, you, you're, you're delivering them. So yeah. before Pedro comes in and does his beautiful voice work, what is, what is that like, you know, before that? Like you are, you're selling this character still. Uh, yeah, and I, you know, that, I think that's why they ended up uh, choosing me, uh, John's familiarity with me from Cowboys and Aliens, his knowing that I was, I was comfortable Western uh, in that genre. Um, understanding the the creed for uh, being a Western uh, nomadic, you know, gunfighter, that whole thing. I think all those things played into obviously his decision um, and his comfort. He and he and Dave, their comfort in knowing that they could um, elicit from me and trust me to carry the torch so to speak and that it, it, and, and that it would matter to me and it does and it always has um otherwise i'd have been gone a long time ago you know like uh there's an honor in this thing um and i'm and i'm very stoked to have it but john john and dave understanding they needed an actor um you know i that was where i benefited you know my ability to uh take their notes, you know, take Ewell Brenner from Westworld and, and Schwarzenegger from uh, Terminator and use the simplicity of movement that those gentlemen did and, you know, their immense acting skill um, and do it as best as you can, which is what they told me. And then, you know, I did my research. I jumped into Kabuki and, and understanding, um, how to not move but radiate which was great because it brought me closer to my grandfather in so many ways because people talk about presence and things like that and so often we have these moments in movies where people tell you they're there and it can take an audience member away my job is to allow you as an audience member to look at the spectacle and live within the that moment without indicating a damn thing so so uh it's an honor yeah but you mentioned kabuki like theater like japanese theater that's oh yeah you, that's something you studied uh uh a very uh small experience of it having watched it once and then studied it for i don't know i think we were studying for like two weeks in uh an educational setting uh, where we we're reading about it and understanding it. And so uh, that's a big deal, you know, like that's, that's a, a hardcore thing uh, to, to step into in Kabuki. It's like, it's so crazy um, to think that if you just simplify everything and you can just, it's almost like that staring game. Um, when we were kids and you'd stare at somebody and you just, nobody could blink and you just, that intensity that would eventually get there and you are both sitting there and you're just owning it. Yeah. Um, that's 
it's a, you know, and I always bring this up, but it, it's like being a kid again, when you're acting, it's like when you're a kid, cause you could imagine anything. There's very few things, unless somebody taught you not to be able to think of this as possible that you as a kid didn't think were possible. I thought I could fly an X-wing. I, I thought I could fly, you know, a TIE fighter or the, or the Falcon or uh, drive a land speeder. That was really what I wanted to do. Um, getting, getting, getting the speeder bikes, you know, I did it all in my head. So being able to do Kabuki uh, style acting, which is what this was, this is 100% that because if you do a lot of this, you look stupid. You look, you look like a bobblehead, you know? So everyone's really quick to be like, Hey, you look dumb. So in a fun way, not in a mean way. Um, so yeah, Kabuki was a big deal for me. And, and, it really did inform uh, Mando everywhere, as well as the Western, which is also, you know, uh, very much a uh, uh, a stoic presentation. You know, that minimalist kind of approach. Well, yeah, I mean, for for Star Wars, the the scale I always sort of put it on is uh, there's you know Kurosawa samurai and westerns on one side and then the flash gordon serials on the other and on that scale star wars slides one way or the other and it's always a, always a blend of those two things um so you mentioned uh, you've mentioned previously how when you showed up and you're doing yeah you know you, you put this effort in already during the costume tests you were you know telling the telling them that the, the amban rifle had to be shorter <laughs> and that or or that yeah. you know the X holster the, had to drop the holster had to draw a certain way yeah. it was too long yeah so for uh, so, you yeah. something that i don't think you know to continue with the dave dave prouse analogy from what I, from everything yeah. i understand it seems like you're certainly more involved with the storytelling aspects of this character and how the character is is represented and how that expresses itself in the narrative you've, you've referenced you know rehearsing with storyboards at certain points and you know talking oh, to yeah. deb chow or doug chang or andrew jones you know people who are overseeing you know the the creative scope the of the whole thing of like sure. yeah, how, yeah how, how, do, how do you interface with that um again i mean i go back to the idea that uh i know how everybody puts their pants on and it's one leg at a time and it keeps it real level for me now you sit down with a dev chow um and it takes about two to three minutes to realize that, that you're dealing with such an incredible intelligent creative person whose compassion uh, her empathy uh is I don't know. It's like spills onto you. You can't help but be like affected by uh, that. And so, you know, we talked, we talked about a great set, you know, Deb was OG for me, season one. Uh, she's out there every step of the way, whether we were doing her episodes or just, you know, one of them. And you, you, as heady a place as you put them that pedestal um that they're just like us they just want to tell a great story and so it becomes easier to have respectful conversations of okay wait 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 i wouldn't do this like it it it's not the type of thing that you know a cowboy would do or a, uh, this character would do and so you're i'm constantly um being encouraged to uh, engage my surroundings, whether it's John, Dave, Deb, Rick, you know, I worked with Rick in the beginning. Bryce is, uh, she's, she's like, she's my life goals as a human being. Like she's, she's just incredible. Um, and then, and then you just start to feel comfortable and you understand that your motivations aren't out of insecurity, aren't out of, you know, uh, fear or ignorance there because either you have a question or because you want to add to it something that you've uh, recognized in the character. 
um, you know, uh, plenty of the time they don't care. You know what I mean? They're like, okay, put the helmet yeah, on, I go away. <laughs> yeah. um, but uh, it, it never rude, never you know like that. But but I mean, they got a big thing. They're they're telling. I'm telling Mando's story, and they're telling a much bigger story, and that's their job as directors or producers. So you throw it in, and then you walk away, and you take no. Uh, I don't know. You don't. You don't take any uh, pride. Pride's a pride. Something I stay away from. Uh, I don't. I don't put my dignity in whether or not they listen to me. I just. You know. I do my job. I give them what I can. Well, a funny anecdote. Yes. Uh, oh, you're you're good. That you've shared before is um <laughs> informing how the that the blurg would move a certain way. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I love. I love that. That it would. It would. It wouldn't. It wouldn't waddle. It would. It would. Or. Yeah, I mean, you, it's you, like you, you know, know, it's not, they had it, they had it moving like it had four layers. Right. Hey, here, go get that. Um, and uh, it's a blurb right there. It was two, and I was like, yeah, <laughs> she's something. That's for dang sure. Uh, but but it it moves like this, and I'm just you know like I was watching the uh, what they call previs, which uh, you might know. Uh, and with that, you get these mo, you know, you get to see this idea of what what the, what's going to occur. So they're like, you know, what is it going to look like if you're right? I said, well, look, if it's a two-legged animal and it's built like that, it's, it's kind of got this, not this. So it's different than if I'm riding a horse and I'm honestly, it's got to have this kind of movement. And so you're going to counterbalance this as opposed to this, you know, like when you trot. So having these little things and you walk away and you're like, I just told, you know, <laughs> this amazing art department to change something because they're not doing it right. Like you're like, come on, dude, get out of the, get <laughs> out of there. But then you go, okay, but it's okay because we're all just trying to do something cool. Yeah. And it saves us from those. It's funny. Cause you do hear these things on set where people are like, Oh no, no, we can't have that. The fans will kill us. Like it's a hundred percent talked about constantly so yeah that's awesome pretty damn funny that's awesome um to keep it keep it in line with uh your uh interfacing with the, the other sides of production star yeah. wars as a franchise is probably one of the most musically defined ips out there and the mandalorian even more so within that pantheon of music is a super rhythmic musical character i mean people associate those few notes that ludwig beautifully made with that character instantly <laughs> and so for you working on season one and then as the theme gets out and people react to it how does the music inform the way that you're moving if at all um it it did because i didn't know the music season one i don't think i yeah. heard it maybe i heard it the sizzle reel so we were pretty far into season but at that point i'm so far into production that i don't even notice anything so um with now that's not to say that music doesn't inform what i'm doing because uh quite often uh i'll put in you know uh, i have i have these and i put them inside my helmet uh and i will listen to music and i will listen to whatever it is so that i can uh music always takes me into uh and through things and so uh i'm a huge fan of that um and and so when i did hear the music and it matched up i and and the and the whole concept behind the music like hey we want it to sound like almost like uh life like this isn't from instruments necessarily even though it is uh, but it's like, you know, these, the wind sound or whatever. And I thought, wow, the level of detail that John and Dave have gone into, and then the collaboration, obviously, that they've, they've, uh, they have is unreal. Like, it's just crazy. And so, um, you know, the, Gorham just cranks out this amazing, just anything. And you're like, oh, yeah, that fits that totally. <laughs> so so yeah i mean 100 i i get ready for uh you know 
gun pulls and things like that by listening to music. So yeah, he, it does. Um, as far as the way I move, it's, I look at it as a way that he assesses his surroundings. He takes that, uh, what I would characterize as slow, um, amble to anything uh, with little, you know, short, specific looks around just to get, get his environment. And it was a big struggle for me because I have been dying to do like, uh, like a John Wick type movie, you know, being in one of those, <laughs> or even, you know, uh, uh, like a terminal list, like Jack Carr. I love Jack Carr, like he's unreal. And so um, listening to his details in his books or, or listening, cause I do audio books quite often um, and just thinking about, you know, the shape and then learning, you know, these kind of holds and then to have to, because no one was doing Westerns, I was doing a lot of FBI, you know, those kind of things. Then to have to drop it all and not be military in style, it's very, it, it, it was jarring yeah. for me. And then, so how do I incorporate the things I want to incorporate? Because, you know, my grandfather or, you know, Clint, depending on who you're looking at in these Westerns, um, they took in their surroundings, but they did it in a subtle way. And so how does Mando do that so that, he's not surprised by anything or that when he is, there is a level of preparedness mentally. Yeah. Well, I, I love you did. One of my last questions was going to be, how is the Mandalorian going to be in John wick five? <laughs> but yeah. maybe, maybe I'm begging. I, I literally send it out as much as I possibly can. I'm like, let's go do a TV series. I'll go do it with you. Let's go. <laughs> I love it. I mean, actually, I mean, that's a, that's a good, uh, I can transition to a, a, a different uh, topic. Uh, throughout your career, you know, I referenced a few at the start, but you've actually gotten a chance to work with a lot of actors who have returned to Star Wars or were previously Star Wars royalty and have sort of coalesced in The Mandalorian by by chance. So Clancy yeah. Brown, for example, was with you in Cowboy oh. and Aliens, Cowboys and Aliens, but he's also yeah. just recently in, in John Wick, which is why I thought of that. So I'm like, maybe yes. there's, a, you know, there's a connection there. Get, got um. So what what is that like after you have, you know, this 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 long career and you know Ming Na from Agents of Shield, uh, Boone from Sons of Anarchy, you're yeah, ev everyone's coalescing in this thing. It's like oh hi again, like here I are, but now I'm I'm the lead guy. Well yeah, and and it's funny because you know often especially for them because they're doing much you know up until this show they their their roles in thing, hundred percent bigger. So you're like. Mm. You know, maybe Ming remembers me. Then she did. You know, like like she was like, oh, oh God, yes, that's right. Ba ba ba. She's like, oh my gosh. Because you were so on she four knew. episodes of Agents of Shield. Yeah, four? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was funny because initially it was like, you know, uh, we we need, you know, you, do you want this? Um, it looks like it should be an episode. And then we found out that uh, Ji Ling was actually the the human was actually pregnant so they were like okay we're not going to have her do these fights any of this stuff we're going to have her have an, an assistant a henchman and so it ended up growing and like the Whedons didn't even know how long it was gonna how how much and so like at one point one of them walked up and was like dude i'm so sorry we we really should have given you more lines uh, we just had no <laughs> idea what this was going to entail so you have those moments like where we're being and then she she and I got along, she's amazing. And then you have moments like, you know, uh, Carl where he's an idol and then you meet him and then he becomes a trusted, amazing friend. Um, and those are not like, th those are things you can't anticipate. You, I've been on other shows where people are, are so dismissive. Um, so for me as the lead, even though I'm not the lead, uh, I have to approach it with the responsibility of, like I was telling you, you know, pre-show, uh, I want people to have the best experience on this. It's my responsibility to facilitate that. And so I have an open door policy. Everybody, literally everybody just comes to my room 
if there's issues. Now, I have no pull, none. I mean, I'm not Pedro, I'm not John, I'm not Dave, but um, I am somebody who will speak up when needed. And, and uh, I do find it really important that we, you know, we stick up for each other. I don't care if you're number one on the call sheet or you're the most recent PA hired. It matters. Um, you matter. And so I get to Clancy walks on set, you know, and I'd, I'd loved Clancy since uh, Highlander. And so yeah. I got to work with him on Cowboys and Aliens and, and he was just a really good guy. He and Keith Carradine were incredible with me. Um, and so then he walks on to this set and, you know, I know what he's like. And so it's, <laughs> it's like, nothing's changed. Like I haven't seen you for 10 years, but here we're, we're back and let's go. And, and, and then like Boone, it was great because uh, I reminded him, I was like, you know, after a couple <laughs> scenes, I was like, just so you know, uh, we worked together before. And he's like, huh? And I was like, yeah, as a matter of fact, I gave you, uh, I gave you a bottle of uh, Duke's bourbon. And there he was go. like, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> and it was hilarious. So it, it was crazy. Like those kind of things is where, where you go, oh, I really love this business because you get to work with good people again. And they really are. They're beyond good. They're incredible. So yeah, yeah. I mean, it's 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 cool, and the fact that they're getting drawn into the Mandalorian means that I'm I'm on a show that that is got some weight to it because they're not just going to do a TV show or a streaming show, uh, at least at the beginning. Because uh, for anything other than that, it's a great show. They have choices. They could go do other things, and they've chosen this show. So again, it's like I got to be. Um, I got to represent it the best I can. And that's the way they were with me previously. So I'm paying it back to the business that I love. There you go. I mean, that's, yeah, all those, all the people I just mentioned are all so great. I mean, especially in that episode, he, Boone plays a character oh, yeah. called uh, Rom. He's such a, I love him as a character actor. He's sort of been nerd iconic since Batman Begins where he's the, you know, the falafel guy. <laughs> And he's yes, just yes. he's like what you don't like falafel and everyone's like that's that guy and i love i, I love him i uh, seen him pop up in places but obviously and clancy brown for me even back when cowboys and aliens which which by the way um you know i'm not gonna lie and say that movie was my star wars but i did see i did <laughs> but i did but i did go and see it in theaters with my dad and that was like a i love that movie like that movie is i don't know i it has a special place in my heart so i i it has a huge one in mind, so that's all good. <laughs> yeah, like it means the world to me because had I not done that, John would never would have even known of me. So yeah, I, I was know, sort of going to. That was a question I, I, uh, you've been so great with your responses. I, there are so many paths I can take with follow ups, but one of the ones earlier was, do you think John would have would have called you if you didn't do that crazy gooch pull? off the horse no i don't and you know i i say that so my wife worked with john on jungle book um so i i'd been around him but john had had the narrative for john was that i was a stuntman and and uh they like that was he's like no nah, is that's he did a he did a crazy stunt on this show you know? um and so i get it but I, I would talk to him every time and he'd be like, you know, blah, blah, blah. How's Tommy? And I'd be like, Tommy's great. Cause that was a stunt coordinator. Uh, and, I, and I would, you know, have to be like, you know, I'm not a stunt man. And he's like, ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, Tommy's such a good guy, which he is. He's an unbelievable dude. Um, and so uh, it, it's just, it's just hilarious. Uh, my stunt coordinator from Boba Fett, uh and JJ, season three Dash, jj right? yeah. he was on cowboys and aliens and he and i he he made me laugh as hard as i've ever laughed uh during a scene once and uh i never forgot it he didn't think twice about it and then when i was talking to him he was like oh yeah and then we talked about it and he was like oh yeah that was pretty funny huh like <laughs> but anyways you know back back to the to the um the idea behind it which was you know um John knows me in a certain light and that's part of the stuntman thing. 
uh, like my grandfather before me, I, I hang out with the stuntman because uh, you just don't get a lot of pomp and circumstance with them. And they're pretty cut and dried and they don't, they're not, they're nice to you, but if they realize that you're gonna be normal human, then they will make fun of you just as easily as <laughs> you know anybody. And so it's great because you're around people that you enjoy, you know, and so uh, who who don't, you know, try to blow uh, smoke yeah, somewhere. Sure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, um, it, it, you know, with jo with John, it was it did make a big difference that he, you know. He saw me as this great, you know, physical, uh, with with great physical ability, which he think he thought the character needed, and the fact that you know uh, I was trained theatrically helped quite a bit. And uh, I think my acting's gotten uh, a lot better because obviously of the directors I've worked with, and because of uh, John taking that chance with me, and that's a big deal, you know. Like you don't get better if you're not sharpening. You know, the, whether they say iron sharpens iron, you know, and that's, you know, I, I've been able to uh, create a, a certain uh, style through the work that John's given me and his ability to, you know, working with the same casting director and them throwing things out. And, you know, like Jason Stabey's like, you know, what about Brandon Wayne? And then, you know, it gets in there and then um, he's like, oh, yeah, I hired this guy before and he was physical. And now I'd done couples retreat, uh, which I got cut out of, um, <laughs> but I'd done couples retreat. So, you know, I'd, I'd, I, I had friends from that movie, uh, Steve Byrne and then Peter Billingsley. There was a, you know, we could, he could talk to me. Like I'm, I, I don't, and I don't impress easily. And I don't know that that, I think that helped me. The fact that, um, I didn't walk around just blowing smoke for him, you know, like I questioned things he was doing and things like that. And I think that, I think that uh, question of creativity uh, doesn't happen all the time for him because he's at such a lofty place, even though he is very uh, collaborative. I think a lot of people get intimidated by it. Um, and I don't think he's, uh, I think he knows and has confidence in what he's doing, but I don't think he's uh, he's impressed with himself. I don't think he carries himself that way in a lot of a lot of the times. There you go. Well, speaking of you know the directors and so sort of to sort of merge the two the two previous questions, um, you've 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 talked about you know Carl Weathers, an <laughs> icon, obviously his episode episode his four episode came out. Yeah, yeah, but. As of recording this, yeah, another Carl Weathers directed episode came out yeah, today. Another you, one, talked, yes. Yeah, you've, you've talked about, um, you know, your first interaction with him and just getting all that love out so you could, you know, move past the scene. Just so I could um, talk. Just so you could talk, right? Which I, but 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 now all these years later, season three, he's directing. This guy's taking charge, and I don't know if you've seen the episode yet, but my God, this guy is delivering on. He's, he's, he's firing on all cylinders. So oh, no, he is. And, and, and let's not, uh, he also did one in season two. Um, Siege, yeah. I, I, I did some reshoot with him when I got healthy and could be back on set. Um, uh, but I didn't get to work with him. That was one of my biggest like regrets, John too, um, because I was sick in season two. So being able to work with Carl in season three was another dream come true you know like i never would have uh, have him direct me because i'd used his um tutelage in so many places in this show uh because why wouldn't you use his knowledge like he's so good um so to then see him do it on the bigger picture absolutely great absolutely great and i i love working with carl because um he doesn't want, uh, he wants to get to the, the characters and their relationships. That's, I think he's incredible at driving that, out, pulling that out. So, uh, you know, he, yeah, his work with uh, Wesley, um, 
I, I, it's, the, it's just great. Jimmy, that's um for those who don't know, that's Jimmy Kimmel's nephew who plays Ragnar, the foundling, I believe. Yeah, I mean, but, I I I will always refer to him as Wesley because um I had no clue any of his relations and being somebody who's related to somebody. Uh I think it's amazing uh that you know we're able to sometimes not you know have the shadow behind him although most of the time i i i you know it's never it's, i've never had a bad day being john wayne's grandson but i understand like when i met wesley i met him as wesley and i've seen him grow up and and i saw his talent and i saw his talent get honed and grow and so then to find out later on you know that he's related to uh Kimmel, I was dying laughing. I'm like, that is hilarious. I was like, I'm so happy to have known him just as this. And then yeah. his dad is such a great guy. So uh, John, I just, you know, he's another John, but uh, he's just great. Like, like we talked about, like, I'm going to go see one of uh, Wes's games because he's playing baseball. He's, he's not filming right now. So he gets to be, you know, a teenager. And so I'm going to go see him play baseball. And so that's awesome. Watching Carl, one of my idols, work and when wesley came on he just wanted to meet the mandalorian back in the day when he was dressed in you know rags playing a, a tuscan raider tuscan, yeah um yeah and he was so excited like the kim the ad uh on on our, on everything star wars that's good uh <laughs> she 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 goes hey this kid really wants to meet you i'm like dude come on like there's no i love meeting the kids the kids and I like, I, I, I get, I am, I write letters with one of the fans of the show uh, who oh, was on awesome. the show. Uh, and so Wes meeting me that in that way, wanting to meet me specifically uh, was really cool. And then to have him come back and then this, so, and then for this to be Carl's episode that all these great cool things happen. Um, means everything to me and uh uh to watch carl you know tell his story uh i've seen it but not completed completed, completed yeah so uh tonight uh me and uh, a couple of buddies we're gonna sit and watch this and uh drink some scotch and it's gonna be great well it is a it's a wild one it is it is short but very sweet and you know you're yeah. talking about carl bringing out the character moments well, oh, yeah. he also is a master of directing action. And speaking of action, you know, you you are you embody this character so much. But it's you know, we, we gotta talk about Latif and and his involvement. Oh. And I I'm really <laughs> curious to know because in some instances, I mean, I gotta imagine there are shots, there are moments in the final edit of the show where between cuts, it's a different person, you know, in, in the suit. And oh, so I mean we have we have moments during fights where it transitions like we switch swing. yeah and, wow okay. so i i yeah. want to hear about that like where is the line between or not not where's the line because that's you know you, you that, that's dependent on every single one but in general the editor. The, yeah the, 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 yeah the editor right but the, the collaboration on set of are you you know are there times where you're both there in mando armor like looking at each other like okay so where is this gonna and then also 100 percent. also i mean barry lowen too in the first two seasons where you know how does he come into, into the picture? Cause that's, that's, I feel like that guy, that guy wears the armor too. And I, I don't think I've ever heard anyone <laughs> ask about him, but I'm so curious to know. No, I, we get the question. Barry's great. Uh, he came in later after uh, later on in season one, when they realized they were going to need, you know, uh, didn't have the time, you know, between the T gotcha. here or, or me here, we had two units. Eventually we ended up having three, which is unheard of um uh, okay okay so so it it as far as you know like uh with barry you know it was like i remember them walking over they were like hey can you uh can you do your walk and then can you um watch this guy do the walk and blah 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 and uh i literally was like uh what? And they're like, yeah, we're just going to try to do this thing. And I'm like, Latif and I have been doing this for six months right now. And we're, um, we're just figuring each other out. How are we going to, you know, pull this off? 
Um, but at a certain point, and I think I've said it in another interview, um, you just do what you do best. Um, yeah. Nobody, very few people are pulling off my specific physical style. It's, I, there's not even very few. There's nobody who does it, period. Uh, there's some people who can capture it the way, you know, John or Dave need it done in any given scene. But it's just like Latif, like I can't touch what he does. There's a power and an explosion that I don't match. I'm, I'm, I'm ropey where he's, you know, uh, you know, he's the first thing is, is he's this, yeah, he is, but like, he's, he's like this and, and, and he's, he's muscular, but he's not like a bodybuilder. Um, but he is as fluid and flexible a human being as I've ever met. Um, his resiliency is next level. Um, and his, uh, you know, his, his loyalty and uh, uh, responsibility are, uh, there's nobody at his level. And so like Latif and I, season one, every, everything we did, we worked on together to figure out how it was gonna look. Um, so those kind of things we're, we're usually about. We, we practice the fights, and if we're able to be there at the same time, great. If not, we separate and he'll FaceTime me and be like, hey, I'm not sure what this looks like, <laughs> you know, or they'll call me in. You know, there's a couple episodes that they had to call me in this season uh, so that I could do certain things um, in the scene because uh, like Latif's like, that's not me. I, I don't that's I'm not doing that. I'm taking this fall i'm doing this fight i'm sliding through cutting some achilles tendons whatever he does and, <laughs> yeah, you know right. prisoner um oh, yeah. holding on to the side that. of a tie fighter with one hand slapping and then the... reaching down <laughs> and then them going hey do you want to do that? i'm like no i'm good um but uh <laughs> with latif it's there's not a question of you know do you do what he does no i don't what he does is Academy Award winning great. It's already won an Emmy. The, uh, there should be an Oscar for it, for Stuntman, for JJ to his father. It's, it's ridiculous. You watch John it's Wick. It's criminal. Is, it, it, it is such, a, such an obvious... Um, it's a whole portion of production that doesn't get any well, But the problem is, is that, that you have actors who just don't want... Uh, they want that credit. You hear him say it all the time. Oh, I, I did my own stunts. And I've been around those people when we're filming and who do, whose stuff actually makes it is not in, usually yeah. them. I mean, yeah. Tom Cruise aside, yeah, you right. know, exceptional. But do you ever hear him uh, toot his own horn? No. Other people do because they respect what he's done. But he's not sitting there going, I'm great. And you know, my, it does, never talks about his stuntman. He talks about his stuntman. Frank Gorilla is another guy who does that. Incredibly physical guy, but he's got his own stuntman, Fitzy. Like, there's a reason why we have stuntmen and why they should have an award. That was, again, I'm on the soapbox. Um, but uh, Latif is, is legend for me. And yes, we work together closely. We call each other, even when production doesn't give us time, uh, we'll call each other FaceTime on set and be like, Hey, I need help, you know, whatever. And that's the way it is. You know, Hey, he'll call me and be like, Hey, where do I put the, which hand do I use the dark saber? Uh, you know, where's my hand on this, these kind of things. Or if I'm there, you know, if, and it, there's a get up scene and, you know, like fall off a trawler. Well, then I get up and, and I, I'm the rest yeah. of that, you know, and it's, it's finding those moments that's made this such an incredible collaborative experience um you know uh with barry with anybody who does other double work you know uh, as mando uh my suggestion is always be you do the best you can do don't do me because you're not gonna be able to do it like i can't i can't do what he does like barry's uh an incredible dancer great guy um because he was in the she was a cheerleader i believe right oh i don't know i don't know i know that he's he's done everything from that i guess cheerleading to uh uh 
like Cirque du Soleil. He broke his yeah, back. Was, the dude's yeah, unreal. Yeah, but like Backflip. he at the same time, you know, uh, he's got a, a a certain steel about him. So you know, he's he's incredibly just he's good, and and he's very gracious because you know they 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 ask a lot, and uh, he's able to deliver in 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 ways that you know I'm not doing it. You know, so, uh, yeah, I mean, it's funny because people do ask about that. And it's, it's people like, you know, do you know when you're in the outfit? I'm like, yeah, I know when I'm in the outfit. I can tell you a hundred percent of the time. And it's not even hard. <laughs> the fact that it doesn't matter who's in it when it doesn't, uh, whether it's, it's Pedro to Latif to me to Barry to, to Brent Walker um, it doesn't matter because the editors do such a beautiful job, John and Dave overseeing it all, uh, of making it seamless, seamless that yeah. we are the character. You know what I mean? And and if somebody needs uh, needs needs the light uh, shown on them, then then they can have it. You know, but you know. Uh, the narrative is what it is. We just we we just do our job, you know. And once it stops being fun, I'll stop doing it, hundred percent. Well, I'm glad, you know, off of that whole, you know, the recognition of stuntman conversation. I am glad that Pedro, throughout the whole process, almost every time he talks about it, brings you guys up yeah. both times. And that that is just something uh, that I really appreciate it because, as you said, so many of it's a common trope in Hollywood, but the I do my own stunts, and then the stuntmen all, often and and women obviously often don't get almost any recognition. The credit, absolutely. Think uh, about all these MCU movies; they don't yeah. they, like. I love Spider Man, cool, but which just the one without the mask on, the or mask on, one yeah, of the right. three guys who wears the you know suit? But yeah, I I love it. Like I love, um, I love Pedro. You know for for just being the guy that he is like when everybody was, you know, people give me a hard time all the time. Why don't you bring up Pedro more? I'm like, I, you know, look, um, he's incredible. He has a lot of interviews if you need him. Um, he asked me not to. So out of respect for him, I don't because he wants us to have the credit that's due us. And so out of respect for him, I, I, less inclined plus as he says look i have enough interviews out there if anyone has a question you know go do it when people ask me hey how did you come up with the character how do you guys collaborate and they go you only talk about latif it's because that's who was available to me so that's how it goes Damn. um you know there there is something to be said for specificity and when when people were t attacking Pedro, only one person posted anything, and that was me. And that was because it was big taboo. Don't talk, don't talk. But I was so tired of hearing him, you know, uh, try to damage him. And I was like, okay, here you go. Man. And uh, you know, then I just stopped again. Like he was like, dude, don't engage because the poison is the poison. If they think you're going to engage, they're going to, you know, yeah, really a, keep a self fulfilling like, oh, okay. cycle of negativity. Yeah. yeah. So I just stopped. I was like, okay, I'm done. We're done with it all. <laughs> well, but to, yeah. To to ask a question that is very much okay, but who is in the suit? There are multiple scenes throughout the show where yes, Pedro's the face, but the Mandalorian lifts up the helmet a little bit and drinks some drinks some soup, whether it's Pog soup or season <laughs> one, it's you know whatever it is. Who's yeah. that? Is that you? Is that your chin that we see? Depends on the scene, but you sure did see it in season two on a ship with a kid. Yeah, that yeah, was yeah. me. That was you. Okay. Yep. So in a way, I'm like, that's someone. I'm like, I know I'm seeing someone's face there. <laughs> okay. Oh, I, yeah. I've, it, I've always been was, curious. Yeah, no. And it was, it's funny. Like there's, yeah, there's more or less than you think, you know, depending on, depending on what, you know, camp you're running through, there's more or less of me than you think. And uh, it doesn't, it, 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 it really doesn't matter at the end of the day, because I know, and if that's something that I need, you know, uh, 
the public to know I never should have done this job. You know what I mean? Like they were never going to, it was never going to be, even though, you know, they were like, yeah, David Prowse, blah, blah. It was never going to be that. They were never going to have it run like that. So um, my expectation has never been that. So I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I mean, there's, I come off that tree in uh, yeah. episode two, right? Wasn't it episode two or was it episode one? God, now oh, I can't remember. Of this season. Um, oh, in, like in the, I uh, pushed off that tree with the pirates, the apostate, yeah. you know? Oh, that's episode yeah. one, yeah, yeah. And so, th and that, it's funny because a fan, uh, Spartan out there, uh, he actually DM'd me and was like, hey, nice Boba Fett move. I saw that on your Instagram. Yeah, great. Nobody said anything to me. And I was like, yeah, that was the same thing as, you know, in, in uh, Jabba's place, you know, Boba Fett comes off the wall. And that's exactly what I'm, you know, I'm leaving on the tree and there's trouble brewing. So I, you know, re resettle myself. Well, that is a, that is a perfect segue into, because uh, obviously Latif doing crazy action, but that's not to say that you yeah. don't, that's not to say that you don't do action. Because obviously, oh, no, you're you, yeah, you're experienced as, you know, as the cowboy. Um, so firstly, uh, I wanted to ask, what is the key to a good quick draw? And what is your favorite quick draw that you've done thus far? Oh, I mean, I'll start with the last question first, which is there's no question. It's chapter 13. It's yeah. the Jedi. And it's, you know, Dave knew that I was going <laughs> to geek out. I'm sitting there with Johnny Ringo. So, yeah, I mean man I don't Which, know. can i ask some, can i ask something about that really quick yeah. you you told the story before where it was almost you it's almost you made it seem like dave and, and michael bean were trying to like psych you out to beat you to it to try and have a take where he be, he beats you is that true oh uh, yes 100 percent. oh my and God. and dave dave was he's he goes he beat you he beat you I'm like, he didn't beat me <laughs> did he get his gun up Yes, but was it anywhere near where it needed to be? And he's like, ah, how would you know where? I go, I know where I, I can take you out shooting on a range and I can hip pull and shoot a target on oh a hip God. pull. I guarantee you, Michael can't. And he was like, ah, he gives me, a, but yeah, it was great. <laughs> awesome. and, and, and it's funny because my whole focus, like Dave coming to do that was great because it brought me out of, you know, like my head in a certain extent because I literally was like, um, I, uh, I just, I, I'm like, I'm, I'm drawn with Johnny Ringo. This is going to be amazing. And so, you know, it was like game time for me. Like at that moment, it was like, okay, how are we going to do this? All right. Squeeze your arms and I know you're going to pull. And then bang. So, uh, that was my favorite. Um, although the bar scene probably meant more to the show. Uh, when I shoot the, I throw my rope and I pull them through the door and then I shoot the, the doors yeah. and it cuts them in half. Um, that meant more to the show. So th th depending I got on a the context. I got a poster context, of that right over there. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, that's it's, the, that's the that moment. is one of the coolest things I've ever done that's been captured and memorialized um now how what's the key to to uh, draw on your gun first of all depends on what you're trying are you trying to do it sly if you're trying to do it sly you better make sure your gun is as low as your hand is um you know but like about two inches above where the palm ends so that uh you can just have your arm hang normal down by your side because if you start to raise your arm up and I'm going to shoot with you, I'm going to shoot you before you ever get that gun out of its holster. It's just the way it is. Cause I'm going to see you have to raise, you know, like that was why I told him, Hey, I need you to drop it from my hip down to my leg. Because if you, if you're drawn from here, your character has to sit around here a lot. So if you're up in this zone, it's, it's never going to uh, benefit you. I don't know what all that is. Um, <laughs> so the biggest key is not to grab the handle. Your job isn't to grab a handle. Your job. Do I, can I get in this damn thing? I can't. 
<laughs> your job is uh, to, you know, this is the handle. Your job is to slide your hand as hard as you can against it until you get the handle hooked under here. So it's, it's right up. Yeah. And that way you're not grabbing at something like ah, it's, 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 pulling. it's one movement. Move. And if you're, if your holsters tilted a little forward, it's not even just one movement. It's one movement out and you're there um, and practice. Those are the only two things. Although I practiced with on Cowboys and aliens with Del Reed, who was there, who taught everybody on uh, 310 to Yuma and Russell Crowe specifically. Um, and I'm telling you right now, like there weren't many people who stayed out there for those trainings. It's funny to watch, you know, people who are like, yeah, they get all these, you know, uh, opportunities and they, and they don't use them. It, it benefits me, uh, my, my writing ability, uh, all that stuff. It got even better because I was around these unreal, you know, cowboys. And so um, all of that stuff and my love for it and my connection to it uh, has benefited me throughout. And so they'll read teaching me how to draw a gun is it's like Yakima yeah. Kanut teaching you how to do a stunt. Uh, very good stuff. Very good stuff. I know, I know you're probably partial to searchers and, and stage coach and all that, but the original 310 to Yuma, that's, that's my, that's my go-to. No, no. <laughs> oh, that's funny. No, no offense, but like that, that's my, like, that's the one for me. I think that movie is. Perfect. I love Westerns. I love Clint just as much as I love my grandfather. I'll tell you what, the, the, uh, the shootest, um, the Cowboys, Man Who Shot Liberty Valance are my top three uh, Westerns by my grandfather. Now, I, the Searchers is great, uh, especially because everyone said, you can't play this guy. He's too old. You're not old enough. And he did it, and he did it really did well. It. Yeah. Uh, the Stagecoach, just because it, you know, John Ford, and it cemented their relationship in the in the future and, and the legacy uh, obviously has value. But for me, it's 100% the shootest uh, for so many reasons. But his acting in that yeah. is, uh, it's, it was Academy Award worthy to me. Well, yeah. in terms of, in, in terms of the Western, and I think the one uh, that at least that I see that, this the Mandalorian is drawing the most upon besides the you know like in the Jedi for example chapter 15 uh, Filoni is just doing Yo Jimbo and he, he's just he's directly doing it but in terms of the whole I've I think the, what's most talked about is yeah the the dynamic in like the good the bad the ugly and all those archetypes and the over-the-top nature of the spaghetti western and obviously what I'm getting to is Cad Bane who's in the book of Boba Fett is directly lee van cleef character and boba fett was always modeled on on clint eastwood you know man with no name yeah and so for the for the draws in that show because you get to be in the last three episodes there unfortunately i i don't think you were involved at all with one of the coolest draws maybe maybe i, I want to hear your <laughs> what i get to is i want to hear your opinion on it between jj I'm surprise you on this one okay well i think you know what i'm talking about between cad jj dashna and uh um Timothy Oliphant, and like Darian that. Kinji. Yeah. Oh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Darian, Darian, who's, you know, playing Cad. And Cad. Yeah. Um, um. So I actually, one hundred percent, was involved with the preparation for that, um, which is cracks me up, because they were like, hey, uh, so we got this big draw with Cad and da 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 da, and I was like. Okay, well, where are his leg ties? We had the same problem with Mando. Someone's going to have to hold the end of the holster while he draws, because otherwise the holster's going to flop out. Up. Yeah, flop out. Yeah. And and sure enough, I'm trying to find this. Uh, you know, um, this is such a great little thing. We'll see if you can see it. There's Robert. And Cad, yeah, I can, I can make it out, yeah. Oh, yeah, there yeah. They are. So 
there there's cad there's you yeah. know uh robert here robert and yeah. that was you know them working it out like how is it gonna how is he gonna do this draw um ha <laughs> look at him oh my god for me that's, and yeah i love that i mean so yeah like and and jj knowing what he knows and jj having to go slower uh because he's right because yeah he gets killed but obviously he's so talented that he could probably yeah. beat out the so my costumer had to get down and hold the holster <laughs> for him to be able to draw oh my god so we so forget awesome. you know like i talk about we about this set you know i'm you said you uh, and listen to other interviews that's what i mean by we like yeah uh, the thing we saw versus the thing that happened and how did we get it to look so magical how did george get those ships to look so real to me in 19 you know 100 <laughs> no, you're not that old uh uh it it's he he allowed us he gave us the tableau and then our imagination did something but a whole crew did a whole lot more and that's yeah. why uh the andrew clatters of the world uh uh, the uh, you know Jason Chu, the JJs, the yeah uh, Kim Richards, who should be directing five episodes a season. Like that's why they are so important. Why I speak to them and their value? Gosh, yeah. I mean, I yeah. What was I thinking? I said that you weren't involved, but I love it's even it's so much better that you were that you got to be a part of that because especially bringing cad to life in that way because he is the most direct like oh this is a gunslinger like a this flat is, out I mean, gunslinger like he's coming yeah. in and leave and cleave yeah uh, he is and he's know, taking uh, pulls out yeah and uh -huh. and for me marvin yeah and for for me i was telling you before the show how much clone wars impacted me and oh, yeah. i re and i remember it was you know it was 2009 the first half of 2009 and it was my cousin's high school graduation and it was in Pennsylvania. So it's a class of like 3000 kids. It's huge. And we're sitting in this auditorium, but that night was the clone wars finale of season one. And I was like, mom, <laughs> we, we got to get out of here. Like, I don't care that Patrick is graduating. I got it. We got to get back to grandma and grandpa's house so I can watch clone wars. And yeah. we, I remember rushing, rushing home and dry, you know, I, we were a couple minutes late and I was freaking out, but that episode, that finale episode hostage crisis is what it's called. But that was the introduction of Cad Bane for the first time on screens, yep. and it's now the I most know. like yeah. it's the most like brutal like oh my god, is it should I be watching this kind of moment? And yeah. I will never forget. Oh, sorry, in my grandparents' house, turning on that TV, and it's him just gunning down guys at, at the yeah. Senate. I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm like, yeah. well, I'm like, what is happening? And so for him to for you to be a part of that and to see how much effort and love went into bringing that same level of energy. To live action oh, yeah is it that's that's just great um, well and and dave you know you talked about dave doing yojimbo but you talk about those samurai movies they're all um odes to the western because yeah. akira wanted the same thing you know uh sergio wanted to do and so these the, the incestuous nature of it it's okay we're going to depict it in samurai we're going to do it in western oh we're going to do it in space and um, it was 100% Yojimbo uh, referenced, but there is almost always a reference samurai to almost every Western we've done. And yeah. so like with Dave, because he loves samurai so much, uh, it's, a, it's a really cool thing to be, uh, to be around because I love samurai. I love the, uh, that's where the, you know, um, uh, kabuki uh, is practiced without masks. A lot of those guys, that's how they learn. They learn through, you know, uh, the the creed of the samurai warrior is if you draw that sword, you must draw blood for death. And every move has to be a kill move. And that's the idea behind the gunslinger. Every time you touch your gun, you need to shoot it. That's just and that's wait sort of the, you don't throw it. and that's sort of the philosophy of the jedi too is that they don't want to use this weapon but anytime they do it's got to be it's you know, 
it's an that's answer. It's not a yeah. question. Yep. Yeah. And that's and that is that that was the idea behind it is and it, and it will always be um, because it's re a relatable thing for all of us, right? Yeah. You know those those moments where we have to make a choice and we're pushed to the brink. We have to make that decision and it has to be clear and it has to be now. So yeah, yeah. I mean, I love it. Like I love I could go over uh, all those things so much so often because uh it's what i was raised on you know these these parables these these songs these you know stories we tell um are a great way to give a moral uh compass to people who otherwise aren't getting a, a faith or religion and not that star wars should be a religion but there are lessons to be learned you know that that you see Timmy moment, you know, you see Timmy, what happened with, you know, and it's like that kind of thing. And uh, it's not heavy handed and you don't have to take it, but it, no matter what it, it gets in you. And that's what I love about it. And you can, I think even better is that when you dig into it, you can take it if you want to. I mean, look at a show absolutely, like, like you know, like Andor or, you know, there, there's always stuff there oh, for so you to really, good. to really dig into about you know yeah. how, and how you can apply that back into yourself um but, but yeah, i'd be so I'd, well written that's amazing i mean yeah there's that's a whole different kind of kind of show but it just as good just as good um yeah i'd be i'd be remiss though if i didn't ask about so i get i got a little i get a little bit of guff for this oh always lovingly but i love uh the specifically the book of boba fett finale and in it is one of my all-time favorite if not my favorite star wars gunfights there you go book of boba stunt team and when din and boba are in front of garza sanctuary just they come out and they're just blasting pikes it is one of my favorite favorite moments and i want to if you were i imagine you were part of it this is go sort of goes to the where does latif end and you begin and vice versa what that's yeah. like because i mean i will never forget and i i know it technically it's not it's not you but the there is a specific move where Boba gets his gun knocked back and then his, his front yeah. knee comes up and locks into the knee darts. And then he draws yeah. with his other hand. And I have, yeah. I, it makes me so happy every time I see it. I've, I've been, I've been doing that move in my, in my, you know, that's, on my own for so long. It's so great. That's J yeah. That's, that's, that's what I was going to ask. Yeah. That's JJ and that's me. And then I guess okay. there's a moment where like uh, Latif had to go flying. Yeah. Um, is that in that one? I actually know it's not. Yeah. That's the earlier one when he catches the baby. Um, well, it's both. I mean, oh, when he goes flying, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Well, there is a moment where Boba and Din they come flying in, they come skidding down. You know, they. they yeah, sort of, I they, mean that's the the fly in part. That might have been me too, but uh, was definitely Latif as well. And that's JJ. Uh, and so JJ and I are doing the gunfight, and yeah. JJ giving me the beats on that. And that moment where his gun goes, he fires off those darts. And I mean, then, oh, you know, so like, good. and we're trying to take turns, um, you know, shooting people in that, you know, for us, it was, you know, there's ding, 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 um, shooting guys off roofs. Like uh, that was buddy cop movie uh, genre there. And and we had such a great time doing it. And JJ's so. Uh, and as a stunt, as a stunt man, he's, he's um psychotic like he does <laughs> i've never seen somebody and i've seen a lot of stuntmen um who always gave a hundred percent like even in the rehearsal of it because and I, I asked about it and he said if i practice it weak then it will be weak and i was like oh i get that because i feel the same way like Everything I do, I do, I go through the set before we ever start filming to make sure I know my path, what I'm going to, what I'm potentially like. And that way I can fulfill the character in a way that somebody who, you know, um, just walks on and, okay, I'm good. And just goes, can't. There's a certain familiarity that, that Mando does uh, require in everything he does and so yeah and so uh, that's cool that you love that i i love book of boba fett but 
I'm biased because I knew when Robert told me I'm making a four hour movie. Um, I knew yeah. what to expect. I was not trying to watch it week to week yeah. and be like, ah, ah, and everyone got so like, whatever. Um, yeah, could they have done things differently? Sure, but I loved what they did and I loved what he did. I, I love what he does 99% of the time. I don't know. I don't know what people had followed. You know, people like, oh, Mando saved it. I said, no, Mando was part of the greater story. Boba saved Mando season three because it allowed John to get the kid back and tell that story. Uh, so, um, no, nah, I think I think there's there should be respect for all these stories that have been told. Uh, and I do love Boba. Um, and I will. I will. Uh, I mean, the the stunts, like people are like, it wasn't actually enough. I'm like the the. Oh, I can't remember what they were. The the raiders who who would get yeah, on the, the train and do. Oh oh the yeah. Tuscans? The uh, not the Tuscan though the um. Which the which other, raiders? There's a lot of raiders. It, yeah yeah, it's the ones that the the Tuscans had to get rid of. The Pikes. The Pikes. Those Thank guys. you. Yeah. The Pikes. Joanna Bennett, running along that train and doing that whole stunt stunt. She's stunt, the stunt, stunt. yeah. She's she's the Tuscan yeah. warrior. Yeah. Yes, She's awesome. she is so amazing in that scene. Um, the Diddy Darnell uh, yeah. did, and they didn't use it. I feel like they used uh, 1% of it, uh, did all this parkour with Fennec and them chasing, uh, and it was uh, Ming uh, who was doing it at that point for Fennec, uh, Ming Q. Uh, and it was just like, you know, um, unreal parkour that was in it that I guess didn't make the final cut, but that I was able to see. So I knew a much richer version of what happened. Um, but yeah, uh, I loved it. I loved uh, JJ's vision in those moments, you know, because you see the, you see those stunt things. Um, and yes, there's a director there, uh, 50% of the time. Otherwise it's JJ second uniting or second uniting or uh, like Kim, uh, uh, if it's something else, but if it's like action like that, you know, JJ's, JJ's, you know, he has directed this and he has directed his stuntmen so that they are doing their acting, which is action um, within the framework of the story. So the fact that you love that, is an ode to JJ and how good he is at what he does because he was telling a story there. You got a character story from his action in such a way that it stuck with you. Um, if that isn't acting, what is right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're all telling a story. Like, I don't. Anyways, yes, I love it. I love it. I love it. Well, I'm so glad that you guys had fun making it because I, yeah, I had fun. I have fun watching it. Um, so. Uh, in you obviously Mandalorian. However, you also, from what I can tell, played the Death Watch Mandalorian, who I have an action figure for him right there, who saves yes. uh, Din Din Djarin. Do you do you play any other characters on the show, or has it just been the two Mandos? Um, uh, it was funny because in the first season, I actually uh, dressed up, got an uh, X wing, and everything, and they cut it. Really? I was like, wait, you're gonna see my face. They were like, yeah, no. And it ended up being what? Uh, the who, director. Who, wait, yeah. who were the? It was it was Deb, uh, Rick, uh, Deb, Deb, Deb and Dave. Dave. Um, their names so, are their names are Trapper Wolf, Jib Dodger, and Sash Ketter. Yep, got that. I get yes. my my fan card. Yes. Uh, but yeah, like it was the directors. Uh, but you was gonna be you. Yeah, I oh, mean, God. I was gonna be one of them, and then uh, uh, I don't know, whatever for whatever reasons it, it was gone. But I it, I look, I don't care. Uh, playing the guy who saved the guy is pretty hilarious. You know what I mean? Like I, yeah. I'm playing Din's savior, and then I'm, you know, I, I, I never say I'm playing Din because um, that is 100% Pedro. When he's in the helmet, he's the Mandalorian. So that's why I always say Manda or or the Mandalorian. Yeah. Just so you know, like that's just because I know 
It's not me when the helmet's off. So like uh, to be able to do that moment was really cool. Um, Taika Waititi was directing that one. Um, and I think uh, because they didn't want to put a hole in the suit I was wearing, um, Diddy Darnell does the liftoff because they had to put right. him in a rig right. and, and yank yeah. him. And uh, uh, Diddy does that. Diddy plays so many people, by the way, that yeah. it's unbelievable. So, yeah, that's funny. That is it's really so fucking funny. It is. He's <laughs> a, he's a, yeah, that's a fun back to the stunt conversation there's people who add so much to it always in your story oh. your first time on set and it's i think it's paul practicing the stunt fall of the nikto off the roof right oh yeah oh like, yeah like, that is from day one, from, coming out. yeah it's like from day one he's he's yeah. doing all this stuff it's great um yeah well i mean this this has been amazing so far so i want to you know be once again be respectful of your time but to move towards a conclusion you have talked a lot about you have three daughters. You're wearing, you know, you're repping your, <laughs> your, oh, your, the your, high, your school high school. I coach your yeah, high yes, school where you yes. coach, and yes. you've talked a lot about what representing this this character who can be anything to anybody, uh, and yeah. how you and how you bring that to coaching. And you know, I know you have a foundation, or at least you were working on a foundation that I would love to hear more about, and what that element of portraying the character means to you um you know it's funny uh it's it's given me the opportunity you know because i don't have to um i don't know it's just given me a lot of uh opportunity as this character to recognize moments of importance in my life uh because i'm working so much that you have to value the time you have and do something valuable. And I look at Mando as somebody who uh, is trying to uh, better his community. And so uh, by playing this character who lives by a creed, it makes you as a person ask yourself, how do you relate to that? You know, as an actor, you know, because I, I, everything I do is imaginative. I very rarely use, you know, like personal experiences, but there are some things that you have to um, associate with. And so with Mando, because it's constantly resonating within me, is this creed that you live by. What is it? You know, I want the community, I want my, my country to be great. I want my community to be great. How do you do it? Do you go and, you know, post on social media, all your views and feelings? No. I, I find that to be um, less effective than physically getting out in the world. I had to think it back to a time when I was younger and my mom was teaching me some values. Um, you know, we'd go feed the homeless uh, every, you know, weekend, you know, probably not that quite that much, but pretty close. Um, and we did it with our daughters when we had our kids, you know, on Christmas morning, we'd go feed the homeless before anybody opened presents or anything just to, you know, just so that we appreciated, you know, the hard work that it took for us to get what we had. Um, and the fact that we had the opportunity to do that. And so uh, I wanted to uh, get back into that because the struggle of life, of paying bills of getting your kids to college and everything uh, overwhelmed me and and you know i got lazy and so i was like how do i how do i get back give back um and uh it just so happened that you know i'd been coaching my kids my for 20 years and uh somebody reached out and said hey do you want to coach this local high school this one right here and uh i was like huh i wonder if i could and uh, this past season i was able to do it with my daughter um, and it was the greatest non-professional uh, thing I've done in my life other than my family. And it's, it's the perspective it's given me and my children um, was so unexpected. And uh, the value that these, you know, young women have 
uh, given me in my life uh, is there's nothing com there's nothing to compare it to uh, the the Lianas, the Mikas, the Olives, uh, Serenes, uh, Liz, like some of them I look at as my daughters now, and and I, I, I it's unreal. And then you go, oh yeah, that's right, they couldn't find a coach, and in spite of that. We've turned something that could have been, you know, uh, a terrible senior year for a lot of these kids and a wasted year athletically for some uh, into something that we all really appreciated and loved. And so what I've done from that and what, what we're creating is um, a foundation where the public schools, which are underfunded, the teachers are not paid well enough. I mean, this is, they're not underfunded. There's it, the, the oversight's not there. Yeah, yeah, and we have lost the value of education and what the intent of education is. It's not to take a test; it's to give a, an education, like a well-rounded education. Like we need PE, we need shop, we need music, we need art, and we need math and language skills. And we need to encourage uh, individualism through that. And without that, we don't have an Apple or IBM or uh, whatever it is, nuclear power. Like without that kind of thought process. So what I want to do is I want to, especially in like the school by me, um, there's a lot of kids who I would say 95% who don't have anything, let alone the opportunity to play sports. And so uh, I want to give to the school and to the, uh, the lady Lancers. You can follow them on Instagram. Uh, the Lady Lancers uh, program. We want to build this program so that it is the envy of even private schools who have every advantage. Um, and, and we can, um, because I believe in them. And they're starting to really understand how powerful and uh, strong and valuable each one of them is and can be. And so uh, shortly we'll have a that foundation going and it's it's to promote the student athlete and their education and their strive to be great both mentally physically socioeconomically all those things and to understand that there are opportunities out there um that otherwise they would not have understood um so that's that's and then then we have the cancer foundation um which has been around since right before my grandfather died uh, the gentleman kids, obviously we're doing, we're funding research, uh, providing fellowships for doctors to find pathways through cancer, to cure cancer. Uh, immunotherapy is a huge one that Dr. Steve O'Day has been at the forefront of to take away tumors with our own immune system and uh, learning that the human body is so much more capable than we understand and how do we how do we uh support that and um so th those are like two things that are really near and dear to me uh and specifically grant high school um because uh it means more to me than i'll ever mean to them even though they would you know be like wow no coach you brought a lot of this no nah. I mean, these, these kids have, you know, it's easy to look at the state of everything and think, oh, we're in a bad position. The world's rough. Uh, where's the hope? And then I met these kids and I'm like, dude, I see the hope. The hope. And then people talk about this country as melting pot. Um, and, you know, my father, who isn't a Wayne, um, he, his parents came over on a boat, but it's so removed from me because they were so much older and everything uh, that, I, it's not that I forget, but it, to then see kids who, you know, Armenian kids, uh, uh, Latin kids, uh, and their first generation, and the idea that their parents have, and the reason why they're here, is that there's opportunity. It gives me hope in what our future is. How do we, you know, in the face of just this glut of sensationalist reporting if you can even call it that uh 
in, in spite of that, there are people out there who give me great hope and it, it's, it's them, you know, like I worried, what is, what is my, what are my daughters going to live in? You know, what, am, what did I bring them into? And uh, then you see other kids and you just, you go, oh yeah. All right. Get out of your bubble and, and see the world. Cause there's a lot of hope and, and I love it. So yeah. That's the best <laughs> I can do. Yeah. Well, I mean, that, that was a, that was an amazing answer. And <laughs> I, yeah, I just, it's, it's really heartfelt to know that there's you, you're obviously bringing, it's going both ways. You're bringing that experience to the character and the character, some of what, what that is, is, is coming to the, coming to the soccer pitch. And yeah, it does. It's, that's too. Just, that's great. Sit there on the sideline. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, yeah, I, I, I a couple of, a couple of uh, final questions here. Who is your what yeah. is who's on your dream Star Wars soccer team? Who's I mean, goalie? Who's striking? Who's midfield? You know. I would say I would. Who's the go-to? I would say uh, Grogu and uh, and uh, Grogu and Yoda have to be. Uh, my center mids okay uh my 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 attacking mid would be ahsoka nice um uh mando he's he's gonna be he's gonna be my one of my center backs with boba uh okay. fennec is playing wing um obi-wan's the coach sounds like a good uh, team Plo Cool's got to be striker for, for, for Dave. Plo bringing in, bringing in Plo Cool, yeah, bring him back yeah. to the soccer um, match. Uh, Luke would definitely also have to be a striker, um, but I just as a coach, I would, I know I'd be fighting with him all the time, <laughs> um, and then. Uh, IG eleven would be the trainer. Um, <laughs> you're going, you're going so far in. I love it. Yeah, well, I'm, and, and then you know, Pelly, Pelly's, Pelly's got to be the tra- got to be there too. Uh, who, I mean, she's she's willing to lose a tooth for it. She'll oh, take, take I mean, a, a ball to the face, you know. She'll I, I exactly. I you know uh, with with uh, Carl Weathers, I was I went to him because you know he's he was a pro. Uh, not soccer player, but pro. Yeah. And so I was like, you know, I'm getting ready for this championship game that I'm coaching. And I really want to, you know, keep the girls focused, keep them grounded and simplified. And he literally said, and he, and he, he um, acted it for me so that I would do it with the girls. And he said, you look at them and say, what's your job? And then they say it. And then you say, do your job. And then you just keep doing this and then it becomes a mantra and I did it and we won it and we won the championship. And I was like, oh, Carl, this oh, is amazing. <laughs> um, but like, That's awesome. so he's coached too. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, not, I, not, I, not great I can, target. I can do, I could do, I could do 22 um, players, uh, five coaches easily <laughs> yeah, just yeah. from Mando. Uh, we, could go, we could go another uh, hour without a doubt. Another yeah, I mean, TV. and then we could break it down how they could be good. Uh, yeah, right. We could do a, a Ted Lasso in. Space. I was about to say, yeah, it's making me think Ted Lasso. Yeah. Well, all yeah. right. La- last question before I uh, I let you go, and I have I have so many more, so I guess we'll just have to come back. Um, <laughs> yeah, anytime. Uh, what is your favorite thing that you've gotten to keep from set, and why is it? the best car spear that legacy effects gave you <laughs> <laughs> no you know i don't know what this spear right here <laughs> <laughs> look at that thing like come on like i've been like it's absurd that you have that i want you to know this is not from legacy this is from uh luke uh made it for me out in england and sent it to me um, and I'm gonna I, I'm gonna take a second. Hold on one second. So it's JJ Industries, and these guys 
do incredible work. So if anybody's looking for stuff, so that's uh, fan made. Really. Okay, this is right. Oh, I don't know how to do this. There we go. Right there. There we go. JJ Industries Unlimited. These guys made this. It breaks down. I have a carrying case, which I can't find. But I literally, just, I can twist this. It breaks oh down God. into three. This thing is heavy, just like the one was on set, which sucked. <laughs> um, uh, running around with that on your back. That was a joke. Yeah, right. Um, but literally, like, that's a great thing. Uh, the best thing about Star Wars is the fans. Um, and there's a the select few awesome. who like to yell at me and do all these things and tell me how ungrateful I am. Um, but 99% of them are just fans and they love the show and they appreciate what we all do, not just me, uh, what we all do to make the stories watchable and enjoyable and how we participate in it. And, you know, like this picture right here is me sitting there on set with my head down. I have my cowboy hat on. This is made by, these are made by fans that, you know, they just sent it in. They're like, this is a whole thing sent by the Art of Mandalore uh, uh, Instagram. Uh, they sent me, and it's all these different people's artwork. Oh my God. And like yeah, I mean, like, there I am back in the beginning, right there. Yeah, in the know? Pinto. Yeah, exactly. Oh, you have no, like, I, I, that was people yelled at me, so mad at me. So then I posted a picture of my Pinto that I grew up with. So that people would understand I wasn't belittling it. I was saying that's what it reminded me of because it had a couple yeah. different colored panels on it, just like my old Pinto did. Oh my gosh. But yeah. So wait, what well, are the other what are the other ones? Did well, I, I guess well, that question. Well, no, I, I it, well, not not by fault of your own, but I was wrong. I sort of led I led you on because I thought that spear was something that was given to you. Not but that's even more. Oh, yeah, that was the man. question. Okay, I love this. Yeah. Okay. Um What have I taken home from set that I like? I, honestly, um, it's the friendships. And I know that Aww. sounds really trite, but it it is. It's the Andrew Clatters. It's the Kim Richards. It's uh, you know uh, being able to you know text Dave Filoni and be like, um, "That was garbage. You're garbage. You know, whatever." <laughs> like because he's a Pittsburgh fan and I'm a I'm a yeah. uh, Kings fan, and so you know. But at the same time, like I'm going out to Pittsburgh in July to go do the Lemieux Foundation fundraiser with Steve Byrne, who's a Pittsburgh guy, Ming Na Wen's Pittsburgh gal. Yeah. yeah. Um, like, Didn't her and Dave go to the same high school? Yeah. And I, yeah. that's really, I'm like, Dave, you're a stalker. Um, <laughs> All right. But like, like for me, the things I value most are like, you know, Frank Trigg, who played a Gamorian guard, is Uncle Frank. Um, uh, and we're going to start doing conventions together. Like my daughter's like, okay, I'm going to run your convention crew and let's get a bunch of people like Diddy, like Latif, you know, Frank. And that way, when you go do signings, it'll be a group of you guys and you guys can all, you know, we can get like a round table and at celebration, we did it at a bar and we had the best time, like the best time. So that's what I want to keep doing. You know, I'm very excited. Um, you know, we stay in touch constantly. Uh, so it, it, those are the things that last. And um, that's why it means so much to me uh, to go back and, and do the show because I know I'm going to see old friends and uh, we're going to tell a fun story. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I'm trying to think if there's, I mean, there's probably things I stole um, from set that <laughs> I'm just not thinking about that I might treasure, but it, it's usually, you know, the thoughtfulness of like yeah. Maria Sandoval, who's uh heir and she's unreal at what she does or, or, or uh, Alexi or any of the, anybody in there, you know, like I love just like you, like I love the idea of being able to walk in and watch them make new uh, masks that these 
somebody's yeah. going to wear or I, the legacy, like all those guys, Trevor, Mike, John, uh, Jason, Con, all those guys going into their room and watching the giddy excitement they have in what they've created. Like when they showed me Grogu, by the way, the first time he had no skin on. <laughs> yeah. The horrifying just eyes. Dude, it was awful. Like I was like, this is going to suck. And they're like, dude, it's not, we don't have it's done yet. shell on. I'm like, then don't turn it on and move its <laughs> eyes. It's fucking disgusting. But they were great. Um, but they get uh, so geeky about it. And you can't help but let your inner like excitement come out that you're normally like tamped down. No, it's amazing. Um, those are things that I love. I mean, like, like I did, I like I did uh audiobook, uh, one of the voices on Daisy Jones and the Six, right? Uh and I was talking to one of one of the other uh, peeps, and they asked me the same thing. And I just realized right now that I'm like, I, you know, it's the t-shirts, and it's not even a you know prop. It's like I've never been on a show where, and I mean, every department and like people within a department make t-shirts, and some yeah. of them make them like weekly. You're like, dude, I have a, I have a box. I don't know where it is. I have a box full of t-shirts I haven't worn yet. <laughs> I don't want a boba. Like, it's crazy. It's crazy. That's awesome. Well, what, a, what an incredibly wholesome answer and a great <laughs> end to this amazing interview. I am so glad you came on and uh, shared what you were able to share. Uh, yeah, I mean, everyone, it's it's been Brendan Wayne. Thank you so much. Hey, thank you, Levi. I appreciate it. And I, I hope I kept everyone awake. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, we'll see you guys all next time. Bye, everybody. Thank you.